A Toy Story Christmas. Take that, Andy said in Woody's voice. You're spending Christmas in jail. He put Ham the piggy bank into an old shoe box with slits cut into the sides. Andy was playing in his room with his toys. In one hand, he held Woody the cowboy, and the other was Buzz Lightyear the space ranger. You'll be seeing bars for a long, long time, Andy added in Buzz Lightyear's commanding tone. Andy's mother came into the room and sat down on the bed. Andy, I have a surprise for you, she said. You know Christmas is coming up, and this year, for your big present, we're going to the Grand Canyon. Andy dropped Woody and Buzz on the floor. He jumped up and down. Hooray, Andy said. That's the best present ever. Can I take Buzz and Woody? He picked up his two favorite toys. I think it's better if you leave them here, his mother said. You'll be so busy you won't have any time to play. Now come on, we have a lot to do to get ready. The moment the door shut behind Andy and his mother, the toys came to life. Buzz sat up, Woody straightened his cowboy hat. All right, Rex, the dinosaur said as he came out from under the bed. The trip is Andy's big present this year. That means no other toys to take our places. I was worried Andy was going to get a video game, Ham added. All the toys started talking at once. Hold on a minute, Woody said. He walked to the center of the room. Sure, it's great that there aren't going to be any new toys to replace us, but did you think about what else this means? It means Christmas without Andy. Everyone got quiet. Christmas without Andy? Why, Christmas without Andy wouldn't seem like Christmas at all. R.C.'s fender dropped sadly. Slinky Dog hung his head. Even the green army men looked glum. Buzz Lightyear walked over to Woody. Andy will be gone, but that doesn't mean we can't have Christmas. We'll just make it a toy Christmas. Woody looked at the other toys around him. He forced a smile onto his face. Buzz is right, he said. We'll have a great Christmas this year. But deep down, Woody knew it couldn't happen. It was true that they could have had their own Christmas, but without the kid who loved them all, it wouldn't be much fun at all. After Andy and his family left on their trip, the toys started getting ready for Christmas. They had a lot to do. They made decorations, practiced singing songs, and looked for presents for each other. Psst, Woody, over here, Jessie hissed loudly. Woody found her hiding behind a stack of books. Look what I found, she said proudly. She held up a red bandana. Why, Jessie, Bullseye has been looking for this bandana for months, Woody said. I know, Jessie grinned. It's going to be a great present for him. Come sing some Christmas carols, Wheezy the Penguin called to Woody. All right, Woody said. He thought maybe the songs would put him in the Christmas spirit. Wheezy grabbed Mike the tape recorder, and as the music began, his high squeaky voice dropped to a deep baritone. First, he belted out a rocking rendition of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Then he glided into a jazzy Frosty the Snowman. But when Wheezy started crooning Blue Christmas, Woody had to move away. It made him think of how sad he'd be without Andy. Catch you later, Wheezy, Mike, Woody said with the tip of his hat. Wheezy and Mike continued to sing as Woody walked off. He was glad his friends were in the holiday spirit, but he couldn't stop thinking about how much he missed Andy. He went over to the other side of the room. Hey Woody, want to help us decorate? Slinky Dog asked. Watch this. He gave Woody a poke in the ribs, then yelled, hit it. In a flash, two aliens bounced super high and draped a string of red and green buttons along the edge of the bookcase. Pretty neat, Slink, Woody said with an approving nod. And nice job, Sarge, he called to the army commander and his troops. They were hanging sparkly silver jacks that looked like 3D snowflakes around the room. We've got a Christmas tree too, Slinky Dog told him. He pointed to a tree made entirely of cotton balls. Red and green hair ribbons were wrapped around it and tied into a bow at the top. There already were presents under the tree. They were wrapped in shiny paper and topped with colorful bows. Looks like it's a white Christmas, Sarge said. Looks like it's a white Christmas, Sarge said. Woody smiled a little bit. He was impressed that all the toys were working together to make Christmas a happy holiday. Woody kept track of the days on the calendar in Andy's room. Finally, it was the big one, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Hours passed with secrets and whispers, and before long, it grew dark outside. The toys all gathered together to celebrate the holiday, but Woody held back. He was thinking of Andy. Hey there, Sheriff, Buzz said. Why so down? It's a beautiful night out there, and it's Christmas Eve. 
I don't know, Buzz, Woody said. It's just not the same without Andy. You're right, Buzz said. It's not the same, but you have other friends besides Andy. Come on. He put his arm around Woody's shoulders. Woody and Buzz walked by Bo Peep. She was reading a Christmas story to the newest toys, the ones who had never had a Christmas before. Bo winked at Woody. Lo and behold, Woody's heart felt a little lighter. Then Buzz led Woody over to the Christmas tree. Etch-a-Sketch stood by the tree, a roaring fire drawn on his screen. Nearby, somebody had set up the wooden block to spell out, Merry Christmas. Get the lights, Sarge, Buzz shouted. The Sarge saluted and turned out the lights. Here's a little thing I like to call Christmas magic, Buzz said. He pressed the laser button on his right arm and a beam of light shot out onto the wall. He pressed the button again and again and again. It was so quick that his finger became a blur. He moved the lights around to the right, the left, up, down, left, down, right, up. The light pulsed around the dark room making a show of dancing snowflakes, sugar plums, and lots and lots of toys, dolls, trains, and teddy bears. Woody's jaw dropped and his eyes grew wide. Wow, Buzz, the cowboy said. That's really great. I didn't know you could... His sentence was cut off by a jolly ho-ho roar as R.C. rolled into the circle. R.C. was decorated to look like a sleigh, and following behind him was Rex with a white cotton beard and a red sock hat. Sorry about the roar, Rex said, even though no one had been scared. Sometimes I forget I'm Santa Claus, not a fierce, bone-crushing, carnivorous dinosaur. Rex went to the Christmas tree. He picked up presents to give to each and every toy. Bullseye was thrilled to have his bandana back. Mr. Spell got brand new batteries. Your speaking was getting a little low there, Slinky Dog pointed out. Buzz got a Star Command 4-way outer space signal interceptor. His friends had to put it together out of a small cardboard box, some sequins from an old doll dress, and lots of duct tape. Thanks guys, he said. It's just what I've always wanted. One of the dolls gave Jesse a dress. Ham's present was a quarter. Woohoo, he shouted. That's as good as 25 pennies. Five nickels. Two dimes and a nickel. I'm feeling flush. And then Bo Peep pulled Woody over and gave him a big kiss. He turned as red as the Christmas lights. Aw shucks, Bo, he said. Woody looked at his friends. Buzz was right. Christmas without Andy wasn't better or worse. It was different. Spending time with people and toys you loved was what Christmas was really all about. Hey Buzz, Woody, everyone, Slinky Dog yelled from the edge of the bed. Check this out. He pulled the window curtain aside. Outside, snow drifted down. It's a white Christmas, he shouted. Merry Christmas, everyone. Woody smiled. Merry Christmas, he replied.